Joining me right now is New Zealand powerhouse Alexi Pesos. He'll be fighting on January 19th on One Eternal Glory. What's going on, Alexi? Yeah, not much, not much. Uh, yeah, coming towards the end of training, you know, one's coming up real quick, um, you know, 10 days from today. So, so looking forward to finally getting to Indonesia and tapering off that end of training. You know, my body's a bit beat up at the moment. Um, quite looking forward to getting all that last, that last little bit of training done this week and then, um, you know, putting on a show next weekend. You're from yeah. New Zealand. It is yes. a hotbed of fighters of all disciplines. What is the Muay Thai scene like out there right now? Honestly, it's underdeveloped. Um, so we have a world of talent. So New Zealand has a rich history in kickboxing. So we have, you know, some really successful kickboxers back in the K1 days. Um, you know, got Mike Hun, Ray Sefo, um, Ronnie Sefo, Jason Sutter. You know, we have a world of world champions um, in the kickboxing. But our Muay Thai scene is quite lacking. So it's currently there is work being done to develop it. So I'm on the New Zealand Muay Thai Federation executive board. And I know that, and I, I won't, I'm only new to the board, but we are working to try and develop the Muay Thai scene. So I am of the view that we need to develop our professional scene. And obviously that needs to be done by bringing our amateurs up and getting them to a higher level. But I have a different end goal than I think a lot of the other people involved in the Muay Thai scene have. And, you know, a lot of people are looking to get Muay Thai involved in the Olympics and things like that. And while I think that's great, I think there needs to be real incentive for fighters to be able to compete professionally as their full-time job, which just cannot happen in New Zealand. You know, in New Zealand, if you're a professional fighter, you're lucky if you're getting 1500 bucks. you know, and that's 1500 New Zealand dollars, which is, you know, give or take 900 US, you know, that that's a good purse. You know, the standard is between 500 and $1,000. Um, and then you take that as well as fighting, you know, once every three months or something that they typically will get you fights in New Zealand. There's not a lot of income that be, can be made. So what we need, in my opinion, is for the professional scene to be built and more exposure to come into the sport in New Zealand so that there's actually money for promoters. That promoters are making money so that they can pay the fighters. Fighters have the incentive to actually commit to the sport for a long period of time to get good then the caliber of fights will rise. Um, and I think that's where New Zealand's a little bit behind sort of Australia has a really good Muay Thai scene. You know, France, England, they will have really good Muay Thai scenes. Um, so New Zealand has some work to do as well as, you know, being a bit archaic in terms of the rules that we fight under. You know, we have a lot of modified Muay Thai fights um, where, you know, if you're looking to promote Muay Thai, you should probably promote authentic Muay Thai. Whether you fight with elbow pads or not, I think is irrelevant. Um, but fighting actual Muay Thai and scoring Muay Thai fights as Muay Thai fights is really important and crucial in building the sport. Well, if anybody's going to change the game, you're in a good position to do it. I, I hope so. I hope so. Well, let's talk about King of the Ring. You know, early in your career, sure. and you're still so young, but early in your career, you went out to King of the Ring, you won it. What has that done for your career? Like, you know, especially at the beginning and the trajectory you're on right now. Yeah, so Kick in the Ring was huge for me. Um, I often describe that as my coming out party into the professional Muay Thai scene. So I had obviously been an amateur for a while. I'm um, going through the amateur ranks, one or three, four, five New Zealand titles, that sort of thing. Um, and then I had fought in Kick in the Ring in 2014, and I lost quite a close decision. I possibly could have, what should have won. I should have won it um, against a three-time world champion, you know, one of New Zealand's best ever lightweights um, that had come back from retirement. Came back the following year. You had a really rough year, 2014. I lost eight, six fights out of eight or something. You know, I fought three fights with a broken foot. You know, it just was not my year. Took a month or two off at the end of the year. Um, got offered a fight against, uh, at the time, New Zealand's number one lightweight. Um, who had beaten me quite badly in 2014 um, at the start of the year um, and jumped at the opportunity to fight him again. Um, and I won, and I was a huge underdog, um, and I won that fight, and that sort of put me in a real good headspace. Um, a month or two later, I think it was two months later, was King in the Ring, and I would, was already confirmed to fight in the tournament. Um, fought in the tournament, and I drew the defending champion who had beaten me once before, Sonny Vanathi. 
um, and I beat him in the quarterfinals, then beat someone that, in my opinion, was the dark horse of the tournament to win. He was the biggest, strongest guy in the tournament, Kane Conlon, and that was a really difficult fight. Um, and we went three rounds, it was a draw, so then we had to fight an extension round. And then in the final, I fought um, one of the home favourites, um, Joey Balon, who then went on to win the tournament after uh, in future years. Um, and I beat him by majority decision. So it was three really hard four fights. Um, and then I won all of those that, you know, in the same night, um, fighting 10 rounds, um, 30 minutes worth of fighting. Um, and that, that really set me off to a good seat because King in the Ring in New Zealand is quite a big thing. Um, you know, I was on billboards and, you know, buses and things like that after winning it. Um, and then obviously it's on TV here. So people recognize you, you know, it was my first, it was my first exposure of walking down the street and, you know, someone saying, hi, can I get a photo with you? You know, so I wasn't used to that. And then my wife sort of was like, who are you? You know, what, what is this? You know, you're just that dorky dude that is my husband, you know? Um, so yeah, that was my real sort of coming out party to the professional scene from there it sort of progressed had a real good year 2015 a little bit worse 2016 2017 was up and down you know so it's been up and down since then but yeah that, that was that was a big year for me well all of your accomplishments have led to you signing a six fight deal with one championship how did that partnership come together so i'm quite a pedantic person I'm quite methodical in the way that I plan things out you know I'm I'm really articulate in what I want um, and I set goals and I like to achieve them and one of my big goals was always to fight so there was to fight for line fight and fight for the line fight title and things you know right place at the right time that got to happen unfortunately lost a decision um, against Ludzilla uh, Phuket top team um, and I learned a lot from that fight. I learned I could compete at that top level. You know, I could have won that fight if I had better had a better frame of mind, I think. Um, but I didn't, and I lost. And that's fine. You know, I take away from that, and I'm looking to take those learnings into my fight with um, Mongol Pitch at one. Um, so moving on from that, I have, you know, another one of my big goals was to fight for one Super Series. As soon as that was announced, I knew that was the pinnacle. I knew that's where I wanted to be, and I knew that's where I belonged to be. Um, so my fight, I fought in May 2018, so I only fought twice in 2018. The first was against Ludzilla, um, in Connecticut, the USA, and then I fought again on Rebellion Muay Thai in Australia in May, and I fought a tough Australian guy, but I broke my hand early in the second round, and it was a really bad break. Um, and I went on to win the fight, and I won on all, all rounds, all scorecards with one hand, um, but my hand was badly broken, so that then limited a few of my other opportunities. You know, I had a few other big fights that lined up that I had to pull out of, unfortunately. Um, as my hand started to heal, my trainer said, you know, what is it that you want to do? You know, are you, because I have, you know, I work full time as well. Um, and I have a family and my wife's studying and, you know, young kids and this. And then he's like, are you wanting to take a break from the sport or what is it that you want to do? And I said, I really want to fight for one championship. That's one thing that is obviously that I want to give a go before I decide what I'm going to do in the long run. Um, and I had wanted that for a while, and we'd spoken about my goals previously. So he contacted them and said, Alexi's hand's getting better. Um, what can we do? You know, can he get a fight? Can he get signed? What, what is it? I mean, after a little bit of back and forth, they came back and offered me a six-fight contract. Um, so, yeah, sort of just right place, right time. Uh, pushing, you know, I'm fortunate to have a trainer and promoter that, is willing to go to bat for me, um, believe in me, and then push for things. Um, so, yeah, we're just fortunate. And he has connections as well. So he we went through the right channels, um, right place, right time, you know, as, as, you know, crucial in this sport. You know, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't, but the right place, right time. Um, and sort of one thing led to another. And then, yeah, they offered me a deal. Um, we accepted. And then, you know, a few months later, I'm fighting for them. Do you have Lurdzilla? on your in your sights because that you know that rematch must be something that you you're hungry for right that rematch I, I would love that rematch you know i think i've grown even though it's only been a year i've grown hugely as a fighter just in my mental state you know um i've always been a fighter that's rushed into the next stage of competition so in boxing they have what you'd call padding your record where one fighter will get really good but he's always fighting one step behind him 
Muay Thai is a little bit less like that or a lot less like that. And, you know, you're always fighting sort of at your level or a little bit higher. I've always rushed into that next stage of competition. So when I was an amateur, I rushed into fighting, you know, the lower level professional ranks, lost a few fights, won king in the ring, realized that I can compete at the national level, you know, as a professional, you know, built that up, started fighting the Chinese opponents and things like that, you know, got to that next stage and then it's just progressed there. Um, Ludzilla is obviously at that top pinnacle sort of level. Um, granted, he's not fighting in the stadiums anymore. He's still at that top level. He's a really high level tie. So I possibly wasn't quite at that stage yet, or at least in my head. Um, and I, I jumped at the fight. I'm always going to jump at a fight. Um, you know, but now I feel like that I've had that experience. I know what to expect and I know that I'm capable of competing at that level. You know, I think I'll be able to give it a lot better crack now. Um, I, I think it'll be a good fight. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, my mind's focused on Monkle Pitch in 10 days. Um, but I have big goals. You know, I've got, I got goals. I've got uh, things that I want to work towards. And Ludzilla is definitely on the map. And obviously, because he's signed to one Super Series as well, you know, there's nothing to say that fight won't happen at some point in the near future. There's always a story, and that's what builds always. fights, right? That's right. That's right. All right, let's talk about your upcoming opponent, Monko Petch. Have you gotten a chance to study him, and what are your thoughts on his skill set? Um, yes and no. So, I mean, I don't game plan for my opponents per se, but I like to see what they bring to the table a little bit, and obviously I've had a little bit of a look into Monko Petch. Um, he's a very high-level fighter. You know, he's fought a lot of the top ties. Um, you know, he's a Lumpini champion himself, so he's fought at that elite level for quite a while now. Um, and he's good. You know, it's one of those things. And one of the things and that I've had a few interviews now, and a lot of people say, what's your game plan going into this fight? You know, what weaknesses do you see? When you're fighting those top ties and at their top level, there are no real weaknesses. You know, he's not bad at anything. Um, it's just a matter of being as good as I can be, you know, when I go into that fight, focusing on myself and what I can bring to the table, focusing a little bit less on him and the story that you can build in your own head about how great this fighter is, how experienced, how accomplished they are, you know, and focusing more on what I bring to the table. Hey, look, I've actually beaten some really good guys. You know, I'm a good fighter myself. That's what I'm going to bring to the table. Um, so going from there, um, yeah, so Monkle Pitch is good, but I think with the training that I've put in, the strong mind frame that I'm going into the fight with, I'm as good now as I've ever been. Um, it's a perfect time for me to really step out and showcase what I have to the international, uh, to, to, the, to the world, basically, more so than a 5,000-person audience. You know, Indonesia, the, I think the crowd's between eight and 10,000, plus the millions that watch live. You know, so it's a big audience for me to really have my big time professional coming out party, if you get what I mean. Really exciting. Your style of fighting, mm. I can define it as aggressive. You march yeah. forward. What are your weapons of choice in the ring? It's interesting because I'm ever developing, right? I'm, I'm always changing. So I like to... Like I said, I develop as a fighter, so I used to be very much just walk forward and just grind the whole fight constantly. But now I have a little bit of trickery that we've added to my arsenal. You know, I've swapped gyms a few years ago um, when I moved from Wellington up to Hamilton. Um, and I used to take quite a lot of punishment in my fights. I'd win because I'd give out more punishment, but I took more punishment than I possibly needed to in a lot of fights. Um, and my new trainer, um, Ethan, he, he didn't like that. So we've added a bit of trickery to my game so I can now fake you know so maybe i think you know just real basic things that i wasn't doing so now i can fight a little bit on the outside as well as grind when i need to because i still have that you know i still have that i i enjoy getting in the pocket and just working and putting in work you know landing knees landing elbows um clinching doing all of that sort of stuff but at the same time i can fight from the outside from a distance and use my footwork a little bit more too um you know, my strongest weapons, I've got a really good jab, I've got a good low kick, and I've got good knees, you know, but being able to put it all together and adapt mid-fight, you know, mid-combination, mid-round, whatever it is, 
that that's where I think my strongest strength lies, you know, being adaptable. I saw you talk about when you trained, you visualize losing and winning. And that's yes. different. That's very different from most fighters because most fighters only visualize winning all the time. So yes. what benefits have you seen in doing this kind of mental training? Well, I hate losing, right? Um, so if I visualize losing, so when you train, you always have moments of doubt, you know? If if you are training and you're not doubting yourself saying, oh, this sucks, then you're probably not training hard enough. Now, I train hard and I think, oh, shit, I got two rounds left, you know, of this. Um, that's six minutes or eight minutes because I tend to do four-minute rounds. Um, so there's always that inkling of, it would be easier to sit down now, but being stubborn, I, I never have and I probably never will, but to get through that, one of the things that I found, and it's same, you know, running long distance, as you visualize the feeling of when you lost and how much that sucks, and then you visualize winning and how good that feels, and you say, I can either quit now and I know I'm going to have that losing feeling, or I'm going to at least feel like I've let myself down, let, forget everyone else, just myself, or you can put in the work now and work towards that successful feeling, the winning feeling, that pleasant euphoria that you get when you get announced the winner of a fight. You know, that's a huge, real endorphin rush. It's, it's a good, great feeling. Um, so you just, yeah, you get, just comparing the two, you know, it's a real motivator for me uh, being you know, being able to give 100% in training when I can compare the two. And I know that if I don't put in the work, I'm definitely not achieving the positive feeling. And if I don't put in the work, then I'm more than likely going to achieve the negative feeling. So then I put it all back on myself. You know, it's up to me what one I want to, what feeling I want to have at the end of this. You know, can I be proud? Whether you win or lose is irrelevant in terms of the work that you've put in. You know, there's no worse feeling than going into a fight and knowing you haven't trained properly. Um, which is another part of the losing. Um, and there's no better feeling, no more confident feeling than knowing you've done everything you can do when you go into a fight and then you win and it's just, you know, you've done as good as you can do. You know, you've really put in the work and things have fallen into place and now you have this new trophy, new belt, new record, you know, new win on your record. Whatever motivates you, you know, whatever you get out of that fight, you know, you have that to show for your hard work and just that sense of self-pride. This fight coming up, it's the beginning of 2019. How many yep. times do you see yourself competing and where do you see yourself sitting in December at the end of this year? Oh, I don't know, to be fair. I'll fight as often as one offers me fights. I'm not one to turn down fights. You know, i got a lot going on in my life as well. You know, my wife's in the final year of a degree. Um, I work full time and i got two kids. But we always make it work, you know. If the opportunities are there, the fights are there, then I'll take them. And I'm not going to take something and half-ass it. You know, you can't do that in this sport in particular. So I'll put in the work every time I train, every time I fight, I put in the work. And if the opportunities arise, you know, I'll take them, put in the work, hopefully get the results, you know, maybe not get the results sometimes, but the plan is obviously to win. You always go into a fight with the intention and the plan of winning. Um, so hopefully I'll rack up a few wins by the end of the year. And um, I know that they're looking for people to fight, you know, slowly looking to build up a few stars um, within the one super series. Um, so I'd quite like to get amongst that, you know, I think that would really benefit me and my career. Um, if I can get them to start promoting me that little bit more than maybe other fighters that tend to just make up the numbers, you know? So, so that's sort of my, my goals for this year is just to cement myself within one championship, pick up a few wins, obviously start getting paid more because I get paid more if I win, um, and just progress through the rankings. You know, I'd love to fight for the one title, but we'll get there when we get there. All right. You can catch Alexi making his Super Series debut on January 19th in Indonesia. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your time, and uh, we will speak soon, man. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.